Welcome back to After the Whistle. Guys, we're to our pick segment now for the game between Kingston and Rockwood. A great interview by Hunter Brackett. We appreciate him coming out and talking to us for a little bit. The kid's having a phenomenal senior season. Hopefully he keeps that going against Rockwood Friday night. We've got our student athletes here again with us tonight, and Brady Lutz was going to lead us off. Give us your prediction. Yeah, Jody, I'm proud of the way our guys competed against Austin East last Friday. Big step forward. I think Kingston's going to win 28-7 over Rockwood. All right. Mr. Harper Neal, what do you say? Yeah, I think the guys did a great job last week. Uh, I got I got Kingston winning 21-7. Awesome. Thank you. Mr. Will Madusky. No introduction needed. Kingston 35, Rockwood 14. Nice. All right, Brad, the athletes have spoken. Picking Kingston large, what do you say? Yeah, Jody, I think Kingston will keep up the momentum from last week and keep the running game going. I think Kingston will win 27-12. 27-12. All right, Huff, what do you say? Yeah, I think Kingston's going to uh, ride the momentum they showed Friday night. I think they found a little something in the running game. I think they're going to travel to Rockwood Friday night, come out with victorious 24-12. All right, guys, and – and you know that I graduated from there, so I got to show a little love on both sides. But uh, I'm going with Kingston winning this ball game, 16 to 15. Welcome back to the show. This is after the whistle. I'm your co-host Jody Maduski, alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman. Guys, let's recap the Tennessee BYU game. Uh, guys, um, disappointing loss, disappointing end to the game. Uh, Tennessee played well the entire game, but. Uh, did not finish the last 17 seconds of the game. Brad, I know you want to talk about that defensive play, that last play of the game that set them up for the time field goal. Guys, we can blame the defense all you want to. My personal opinion, we had the ball a few minutes ago in the game. All you have to do is get a first down. They don't get the ball back, and we win the game. Guys, I'm, gonna say, I'm just going to throw it out there and give you my take. Um, Pruitt, I know he's in starting his second year. Guys, we were 5-5 five and five with two games to go last year. All we had to do was win one to be bowl eligible. Missouri's hung 50 on us. And we play Vanderbilt. They hang another close to 40 on us, and we yeah, go 5-7. and seven. Got blown out. So now we start. Here we are in 2019. Took a just a horrific loss against Georgia State. And now we... Lose to BYU in double overtime, 29-26. Brad, uh, man, tough loss. Um, you did not not want to be 0-2 at this point. Give me your take on the game. Yeah, Jody, if you'd have told me we'd be 0-2 at this point, I'd have, I would not have believed it. Uh, you know, last week, Jody, we talked about how the team played with no effort, no energy, no enthusiasm. This week, I saw all that, which was very good to see that at least – Let's me know that they're listening to Coach Pruitt and playing for him. So the effort was great Saturday night. But, uh, guys, you can't just play hard. You also got to play smart. And uh, I just don't understand that situation at the end of the game. Uh, you know, the clock's running, 17 seconds to go. They had no timeouts. They're on their own 20. There is absolutely no reason they should get in field goal range right there. But the thing I don't understand, you know, if, you're, if you make a mistake and get close enough to a receiver where he's going to run by you, as a defensive back, why don't you just reach out and grab him, pull his pants down, pull his helmet off, do something. Don't let him run by you 20 yards. You know, it's a 15-yard penalty in college. It's not a spot foul. A penalty there would not have hurt us. But, uh, you know, he shouldn't have been in that situation anyways. He should have been backpedaling, playing deep. That's the only chance BYU had was to go deep. And, uh, guys, just another kick in the gut from Tennessee football over this last decade. We've had plays like this, 2015 Florida, 2017 Florida. Other plays just that don't happen, just don't seem to happen to other teams. It happens to Tennessee. It was just unbelievable. But we did do a lot of good things. The offensive line came to play, had close to 250 yards rushing. That was good to see. Uh, the defense played really well up until the last series, and then the overtimes they didn't play well. But up until that point, they played very well. Uh, but offensively, Huff, it was a struggle, especially at the quarterback position. I'll let you talk about uh, Garantano's performance. Yeah, let me talk about JG, but let me let me first let me let me let me talk on the positives first. Um, Saturday night, like you guys have already said, from last week was poor effort, but this week effort was there. Oh, it was. It was they uh, both sides of the ball, 
Coaching, I thought the game plan was a little better this week as well. Uh, came out with a lot of energy. Crowd was great. You know, we thought there was going to be some question marks about whether or not fans would show up. Well, they yeah, showed they up big wild. time. Showed up. Crowd was there again, time after time. Crowd always shows up. It's not a question about that. So, you know, I was happy to see everything transpond from improvement from last week to this week. Offensively, running game was great. Tyson Chandler had a big game. Uh, Eric Gray as well, true freshman. I think he's going to be a special player for UT before it's all said and done oh, with absolutely. him. Uh, defensively, played great for 59 minutes and 30 seconds. And then the heartbreaking bomb that seems to plague us game, time and time again in that situation over the last couple of years. It's unbelievable. But let me get to the negative. I'm going to throw my two cents worth in on the quarterback situation. Jarrett Garantano. I know everybody's picking on the defense about giving up that last play, but me personally, I don't think it should have came down to that situation. I think we had numerous times all game long to put that game away. There was guys, receivers, wide open. Juwan Jennings had a touchdown, was wide open, and Garantano was five seconds late throwing the ball. He missed receivers. He, he only he, He's staring down receivers. Looking at one side of the field, there's guys open, and I just don't understand it. I mean, he has really struggled this year. Last year, a lot of the blame fell on the offensive line that he wasn't being protected. But whenever he did get protection last year, he had some good games. But so far this year, the line has not been the problem at all. He's had time to throw, and then he's just not seeing not seeing the field. Well, Huffman, to me, it seems like if his first read isn't open, uh, he really struggles. And like you said, he's just looking to one side. He's not looking people off. And then when he you know, finally does go through his progressions, he's late with the ball at least a second, second and a half. And I know uh, Coach Pruitt got into him one play. He missed Palmer wide open for a touchdown uh, during the second quarter, and he got on his rear end pretty good. But, yeah, he's just late with the ball and not seeing the whole field, huh? I, I agree. And, I, I, like I said, I don't know what the problem is. But I think it's time – I'm not saying to bench him. But I think it's time to see what we got behind him. I mean, we got a couple of freshmen over. I know they say they're not ready. But, you know, to in practice they're not performing. But, you know, we heard a few years ago Josh Dobbs wasn't performing in practice. That Justin Worley was by far the better quarterback. Well, Dobbs got a chance to play, and the rest is history. Look what happened. You know, some, some guy – I'm not saying practice isn't important because it is important. But some guys shine with the lights come on. Some guys don't. So and I'm – I'm, I'm sorry, Jody. Oh, that's all right. I was just going to say, Huff, that, uh, you know, BYU had a 19-year-old quarterback that played Saturday night. And it, he, granted, he didn't play very well, but he didn't lose the game. It ended up winning. So, um, you know, I'm like you. I'm, I'm ready for the other freshmen to get a shot. Well, hopefully, guys, this week we'll get a big enough lead and we'll get to see both those guys. And like you said, Huff, I'm, I'm a full believer in gamers. And like you said, and practice is very important. But uh, I've seen guys that uh, just come into games and when the lights are on, boy, they shine. So I, I fully believe in that. I, I agree, too. Um, you know, big, you know, the saying goes, you know, uh, big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games. Dobbs did it when he was in there, when he came in. You know, i just like to see if the freshman, you know, maybe give him a shot. Now, I'm not, you know, start JG, see how it goes. Like I said, we're playing Chattanooga. We should we should be able to get a lead and play yeah, some guys. Goodness, you'd hope so. But I just want to see some of the freshmen play, let them get out there and see what they got. And if they show that they can play under the lights, you know, give them a series against Florida. Throw them in there. Well, because right now, I mean, it's not working. I mean, something's off with JG, and we just need to – I just think we just need to see what we got behind him. Well, and you give every other position multiple players out there. You know, you run an offensive, defensive lineman. You know, you're running in guys all over the place all game long. But uh, to, to not run in a, another quarterback every now and again, uh, it, it just seems crazy to me. Right. They're playing eight and nine linemen, and some of them are true freshmen. So, you know, that's tough. So, I, like I said, I just think it's time to just see what we got. Guys, me personally, I'd like to see the Mauer kid. Uh, you know, he's very mobile. They say he can run. And in college football, guys, if you've got a mobile quarterback, I just believe that's uh, – that's half the battle right there. If you got a mobile quarterback that can throw and run, you're that's that's what you need. That's a big plus to have. I mean, just like you guys said earlier, you know, that was one thing that Dobbs had. You know, uh, he had that uh, part of his game, and he was it, it was huge for our offense. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out this Saturday. And one other thing I like to add too is also, you know, 
competition makes you play better. And right now, you know, JG don't have any competition, so he's just going out no matter what. And so throw them others in there. That may that may light a fire under him and right. eliminate some of these mistakes. And he knows he's got a player. He ain't go, he ain't going to going to perform or he ain't going to play. I agree with that 100. percent I mean, it, that that just brings out the the competitor in yourself and and. You know, let him sit a series or two and let him get a dose of seeing the game from the sidelines, and, and you never know what that could do right. to a guy. Exactly. Like I said, I'm not saying bench him permanently. I'm just saying, you know, give the other guys a chance, see what happens, and then, let you know, maybe that helps him out where he can, you know, step back and see what things going on from the sidelines, and then he can get back in there and play. Because obviously, you know, he's an upperclassman, third-year player, but he's making mistakes that third-year players can't make. Well, guys, I'd I like to see the player that played at Auburn last year. He was confident, made great throws. And uh, those games last year were few and far between, but he looked like a confident player that game last year. And this year he just does not look confident at all. And that's the biggest thing that I've noticed. I agree. Guys, good take, uh, good summary. It's going to be interesting to see how it, it plays out Saturday. It's UT Chattanooga. Uh, bless their hearts. Um, you know, if, if you told me that we played them – 18 months ago, I would say it's going to be a, you know, 65 to rip ball game, but, uh, it should be. and it should be, you're right. Um, guys, so we'll see how it plays out. We'll finish our last segment when we come back with our pick segment for the game. And also we'll do our shout outs. Okay. Get in here. Landon Diggs. What's your pick? I refuse to pick Tennessee, uh, 27, 20 Chattanooga. <laughs> Come on, Landon. Oh, that's an absolute move. I can't, right, well, we I can't believe that I heard what I just heard. <laughs> All right, Will Maduski, what do you say? The way Tennessee's offense is looking and their defense, I've got to go. Tennessee 14, Chattanooga 3. People better ask for their money back if that happens. All right, guys, uh, it's UT. It's UTC. Give me your take. Well, Jody, like you said earlier, this is a game Tennessee should score 50 or 60 points, but with the struggles at the quarterback position, I don't think we'll score that much. But I think UT will win 41-13. Huff, what about you? All right. Well, listen to some of these other scores being predicted. <laughs> if uh, that holds true, alcohol sales should be high <laughs> yeah, Saturday night kidding. or afternoon. But uh, in all seriousness, though, Chattanooga, a lower-level team. I know Tennessee struggled. And, I mean, I've been critical of quarterback play. I'm going to say they get things going a little bit better this week. Tennessee, 34. Chattanooga, 6. All right. Good picks, guys. Uh, yeah, I think they uh, build off the momentum from last week. Uh, heartbreaking loss in the last 17 seconds of the game. Uh, UTC, um, you know, there's not much you can say about them. They shouldn't be able to compete in this ball game. I'm picking 35 red final score. All right, guys, let's talk. Uh, let's do our shout out segment. Uh, we got a few shout outs we'd like to give. Um, guys, uh, we, we heard today, got some great news that Jackson Igo got to come home today from Vanderbilt Hospital. That's excellent news. Excellent great news. news. Um, they did a parade for him, and uh, that is just awesome news to hear. Glad that the kid has finally got to come home, and uh, we're, we're going to continue to pray for you, and, man, hope you get better soon, but we're just glad you're back home. Huff, you want to talk a little bit about the golf team? Yeah, let's give a shout-out to the Kingston golf team so far this year. 20-2, and two, off to a great start. Big season for the Jackets. Hopefully they can keep going. Uh, the girls' team are 8-14, uh, showing some strides of – uh, make an improvement there, so it's good to see them. Hopefully they'll keep it going as they move in to, towards the end of the season and get towards the district tournament. Yeah, the boys' team having a great year, guys. 20-2, uh, that's excellent. Uh, the girls' team, uh, my cousin's daughter's on that team, so I can give them a little shout-out. But uh, She said they're improving every day and getting ready for district tournaments, so you guys keep, keep doing good. Guys, I'd like to give a shout-out to a business in, in Kingston. Uh, if you haven't heard, the name of it is Our Town. It's located at 205 East Ray Street. They're right across the street from the courthouse. Great types of coffee, daily sandwiches they make. And uh, if you hadn't tried it, go by there, see Matt and Robin, Bailey and John, and they'll fix you up. Great place to go. and oh, Excellent place. Have yourself a nice uh, cup of joe, as they say. Uh, they have their fall flavors out. Stop by in there and see them sometime. Guys, appreciate you being here. Appreciate the 
student athletes and Hunter Brackett for being on the show. Another good show. Big week next week. Gator week. Big week. We'll see you next week.